How's it going guys? So this is a video that a lot of you have been requesting for some time now. How to Libre Boot a ThinkPad. So here I have a ThinkPad W500 that is completely disassembled from the chassis and screen and everything else like that. And right now it's still running the stock BIOS firmware. Now before I get into the actual Libre booting process, there's just a few things that you should know about this and tools and whatnot that you're going to need for the process. So uh, first of all, this is one of those things where you should definitely make sure that you feel comfortable about what you're going to do before you do it. So don't just use this video as a tutorial. Go to the Libre Boot website. Uh, use other resources. I used like four or five different resources before I actually went ahead and did this. Because if you mess up the process, if you connect to your BIOS chip incorrectly, then you can end up frying it and basically bricking the computer. So it can be kind of expensive if you make a mistake. Also, if you don't have a ThinkPad yet, if you're thinking about getting one to try out this process for yourself, then I actually don't recommend getting the W500 like I have here. Go with something like the X200 because the W500 and most of the other models you have to completely take apart uh, like this to the motherboard in order to get access to the BIOS chip. But with the X200, you don't have to do as much of this. So uh, that's a better option. Although this is one of the more powerful laptops that you can install LibreBoot to, which is part of the reason that I chose this particular model. Um, now the way that I'm going to be actually installing LibreBoot is with a CH341A programmer. So this one uh, also comes with the 16 uh, pin clip. There you go, you should be able to see it. Uh, now this is the part that's probably the most confusing uh, to people who maybe haven't used one of these things before, uh, is how to wire it up, okay? so. Like I said, it's 16 uh, pins, and this one, the first pin starts where you see this pink wire here, okay? So basically, this is pin number one. Uh, and then to connect it to the ThinkPad, try to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so you might barely be able to see it, uh, but there's a little notch here on the BIOS chip, not this yellow thing, but the thing right above it. Okay, so that marks uh, where number one is for the BIOS chip. And I think it also says a one right there. So that's telling you where the first uh, clip will go. So pink is going to line up with it like that. I forgot to mention this while I was recording, but you want to figure out the exact kind of chip that you have on your board. So I just took a picture of it with my phone zoomed in and I was able to read the model number off of it that way. So this particular one is an MX25L6405D. And I looked up the specifications of it so that I knew for sure what the pinouts are. So you should do the same thing with your board to make sure that you have the right pinouts. And it's also a good idea to try to clean around the connectors a little bit just to make sure that you're gonna have a solid connection for when you do the Libre booting process. Now, I also have these DuPont wires uh, that are connected from this piece here. Uh, and then this piece, again, pink goes to number one, which you can see there. Let me try to zoom it in a bit. Okay, pink goes to number one. Although with this, there's only one way that you can plug this in. So if you get this particular kind, it's, it's pretty much impossible to mess up this part. Uh, and then we have the DuPont wires, uh, female to female, that are going out from different numbers here. Okay, so number two is going to be connecting to Oh yeah, I should try to just do this because this is the part you need to see. Okay, so two is going to connect to 3.3 volts. Number seven is going to connect to CS. Number eight is going to connect to, uh, this might say MIOS like it does on mine, or it might say MISO, 
first two letters are the most important ones. So master input. Um, and then that's, that's what eight is going to connect to. 10 is going to connect to ground or GND. 15 is going to connect to uh, MOSI or master output. And 16 is going to connect to CLK. All right, so you can see how I've got it wired up there and then um, how it connects here. Uh, and I think the colors technically don't matter, but you know, there's, there's a certain color coding. Like I think um, green is usually used for ground. I don't have all that stuff memorized, but you know, you, you can color code it however you want to um, memorize that or follow any official color coding if there is one. Okay, and so now we're gonna go ahead and connect it to the ThinkPad. Here, I'll zoom it in a bit. And you wanna make sure that you connect to the ThinkPad and that you have this situated correctly before you plug this in to your other computer um, or before you plug it in. Well, if you're gonna use a Raspberry Pi, you can just connect these directly to the Raspberry Pi. I uh, don't think I mentioned that, that I'm gonna be connecting this to another computer and that's what I'm gonna to use to actually uh, talk to. Like this is basically just facilitating the talk between the other ThinkPad that I'm going to run flash ROM from and this. Uh, but yeah, make sure you connect the clip to the chip before the USB into the other computer because you could potentially fry the chip if you do it the other way around and you uh, don't connect it right. All right, looks like it's plugged in correctly. Then I'll go ahead and plug this into the ThinkPad. Okay, so this is a screenshot from the computer where I was running the commands to LibreBoot the disassembled ThinkPad. Uh, so first thing that I'm doing here is I'm using Flash ROM to read the BIOS firmware that is on there already, so the stock BIOS firmware. And I'm outputting that to a file called read1.bin. Uh, and actually you can see here that when I ran that command initially it failed because it wanted me to specify the chip definition uh, with the C option. So here is where I was able to run that successfully by specifying that option. And then I output to read1.bin. And then I do the same thing again, but I output it to read2.bin. So the reason that I'm doing this is I want to verify that it is able to read from that disassembled ThinkPad correctly, okay? Because with that connection that we were doing, there's a chance that things can get messed up. So if you read from this two, maybe even three times, and then you compare the files with diff, like I did right here, and you get no output, meaning that there's no difference between the files, then you can be fairly confident that there's no issues with that connection and you know, you're able to read correctly because you really don't want to run into any problems when you're writing. You can end up bricking it if that happens. And one other thing that you should take note of at this point is the size of the BIOS that you're reading. So you can see here where it says 8192 KB or eight megabytes. And then here again, it says eight megabytes. Keep that in mind what yours is because the size of this is going to determine which LibreBoot ROM we download. Okay, so let's go and download our LibreBoot ROM. So you want to go to libreboot.org forward slash download and you want to choose one of these mirrors. So I chose the MIT one and you want to go to stable. You want to go to the latest date that's here. So this um, September 7th. And then you want to go to ROM. And then here you can choose uh, whether you want to do GRUB or CBIOS. I just did GRUB for mine. And then here we have all of the different images for different models. So 
I'm using a W500, but it's gonna be the same one for the T500. And remember, mine was eight megabytes, so this is the one that I would download, T500, eight megabytes. If you were on, say, an X200 and it was eight megabytes, you would download this one. If it was four megabytes, you would download this one. Make sure you pick the right one, because again, if you flash the wrong one, you can end up bricking the computer. All right, and we'll take a look at some more screenshots again, so. Here I'm inside of that folder from the archive that I just showed you to download. And this is where I'm running the command to write this particular ROM. So you'll notice that there's multiple ROM files that are inside of it uh, for things like different languages and different keyboard layouts. So that's why the one I'm choosing here is US QWERTY uh, and then VESAFB.ROM. Now, when I initially ran it, I ran into the same problem when I initially tried to read, which is that it wanted me to specify the chip model. So I think that it's probably just a good idea to always specify this chip model. And again, that's why I recommend looking at multiple guides when you're trying to Libre boot, because some of the ones that I looked at, the person who was showing the tutorial didn't do this. So. This is what I had to do in order to actually read and write from my uh, ThinkPad. So here I'm running the command to write it and initially it actually failed. So this is the screenshot that I took from that. So I kept getting the same uh, error that said um, it would reading old contents done and then erasing and writing flash chip failed and then it would give a different memory address, and it retried this three times. This entire process for it to completely fail and then drop me back into the terminal took, I'd say maybe about six minutes or so. And after this happened, uh, the first thing that I actually did, it, it was kind of weird. First, I tried to read from the chip again, and I was able to read. So I thought, okay, maybe it's just perfectly fine. And then I tried again to do the same write command. Uh, so you can see here where I tried it. Uh, and here I was trying to mess with the uh, SPI speed. Like I was reading that that's something you can try to adjust, but I think that this is more for when you're doing it from a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I didn't find any guides of people doing it from a computer using this. But anyway, I just reran the same exact command again that I did from last time, and this time it worked. So it was able to erase and write the flash chip, read write done, and then verified it, verified. So that means that the process went through successfully. This one only took maybe a minute to execute. So. I guess that's one way that you can tell if it's doing it wrong, if it lags. I don't know whether or not it's a bad idea to interrupt the command, I would say probably. So that's why I just let it keep running for that six minutes or so to let it fail out. Uh, but I didn't even have to reseat the connection. I just tried reading from it again and it read successfully. So then I went ahead and wrote to it. Probably a good idea to download your firmware before um, reading from it, although I don't know, I guess maybe you wouldn't know how to figure out what size and megabytes it is without reading from it. And this is what your computer will look like when you start it up after Libre booting. So you get this nice screen with the penguin hugging the GNU. And this BIOS actually loaded a whole lot faster than the stock BIOS, so that was pretty cool. Uh, this whole process was really pretty cool, and it was pretty fun to make this video. I certainly hope that you guys enjoyed it. Like and comment to hack the algorithm, follow me on Odyssey, and have a great rest of your day.